a deal at um, Stilettos tonight for Ed. We got some brochures we'd like for you to come between 5.30 and 7.30. We want Ed as our next tax collector. He's got a brain. And I'm going to vote for him now since I found out um, he does some work on commission. And then I have Allison here. Where's Allison? Two bucks here. She's a crazy she was sitting right here. Kim Bogart can't make it um, today. And um, so Kim can't make it. So he is my um, token dem. And since I like to be fair and balanced, Allison is my token dem. Hi. How many people have been going? We are voting for me on November 6th for Castle County Crown to be a Fraser. We had a great mixture at Quality Inn last night. It was a combo ribbon cutting for um, the Chamber and Reuters Club. And Joe Alpine, the president of the Chamber, actually showed up. I was totally impressed. One quick announcement, and I'm going to need a lot of help from everybody here. The Chamber wants, people in the Chamber want me to run for Governor of West Pasco next year. If we do this and we win, Rudis Club will rule the networking market in Pasco County, guaranteed. So we're going to go have fun and do it. Also, um, every Thursday I give the jobs report. We got a big crowd. I'm not to ignore that. Today the jobs report came out that we were down 29,000 people applying for unemployment benefits last week. And they said that was down from 385,000 last week. Well, last week they said it was 382,000. Obviously, they do cheat every week and, and pull the numbers up. Um, and um, I think the regime, what they're trying to do is find out how to get more people not looking for jobs so they can get the unemployment rate down again next month. Kind of weird. But that's what happens. Um, we have a special guest here today, Gus Bilarakis. Our congressman, and I will uh, turn the mic over to him and let him say whatever he wants. Uh, I, know you're I, I don't want to talk too long, uh, but uh, thank you very much. This is outstanding. Uh, boy, I can't wait. Jim, this is incredible. It really is. And it's a lot of fun, too. Now, I'm not going to talk very long because I don't want to bore you. But I uh, just want to tell you a few things, uh, what's going on politically, but also uh, uh, some of the stuff that I've done in Washington, D.C. One thing I will tell you, if we win this election, God willing, uh, we'll be representing the entire county of Pasco. And I'm very, very excited about that. I've spent a lot of time in Pasco. I practice law here. Don't hold that against me. I'm a lawyer. Because I'm a total reformer, believe me. I'm very pro-business. Uh, but uh, I practiced law in Pasco for about 15 years, mostly real estate and estate planning. Uh, and, and then Dad did a lot of his work here in Pasco County, so I kind of almost grew up here, even though we lived in the Proper Springs area. Uh, and I love it there. I, I live in Palm Harbor right now. Uh, but uh, I think that I can do a good job representing uh, Pasco County. Uh, we have 300,000 new constituents, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if we're fortunate enough uh, to get elected. So, uh, yeah, I know the Bill Rackett's Bill name is known pretty well, but uh, with these 300,000 new constituents, you really can't take anything for granted. So what I'm doing is I'm moving around the district. Uh, we'll have all of Central Pasco will be new areas, uh, and East Pasco as well, and I currently represent West Pasco, and I, I represent North Pinellas, and uh, most of, or quite a bit of Hillsborough County. But we're losing, due to the redistricting, we're losing a lot of Hillsborough County. Uh, we'll keep Northwest Hillsborough. But uh, it's an honor, a privilege to represent you in the United States Congress. Uh, I'm Vice Chairman of the Veterans Committee, uh, and we have to take care of our true American heroes. Don't you agree? Yeah. Uh, this, last week, this last week, I passed a bill off before the House of Representatives uh, making sure that we beef up that GI Bill for our veterans. 
um, and also making sure that we hold these educational institutions accountable. Okay, and there, ha there has to be transparency. And we want to give the soldier as much information as he or she can have to make the right decision, okay, with regard to training. Now, I just talked to some veterans. Uh, we also, in that particular bill, we want to make sure, now we've got it, the Tenth Amendment is very important, but we're encouraging states to take the training, the military training, Okay, make sure that we consider the military training and speed up these certifications so, so our veterans can get work as soon as possible. So I don't, we expanded the clinic, as you know, here in West Pasco County. My dad actually got the clinic in, in 1985, and I expanded it here in West Pasco County. Healthcare, educational benefits, giving our veterans opportunities. Now you know about Bush now, uh, what happened over there a couple months ago, well, it happened before, but we discovered it a couple months ago, where a World War II vet was, uh, unfortunately, this is terrible, buried in a cardboard box. Yes. Uh, awful, awful. That could never, ever happen again. Okay, now what I did was I passed legislation just last week, also for the House of Representatives, to make sure our veteran is provided, uh, if he doesn't have a next, or if she doesn't have a next of kin, they have to be provided either the cast it or the urn uh, by DOD or VA. We passed that off the floor. Uh, I had, now, you know, again, the United States Senate doesn't move. Now, I know Marco Rubio very well, and I picked up the phone and called, uh, I, I called him and, uh, and said, Marco, you've got to do this for me. You've got to get this food for me. Unfortunately, you know, not being in the majority of the Senate, it makes it very difficult, but I know he's going to try very hard. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we brought together the NFL, co-chairman of the military caucus, uh, and my dad founded the caucus many years ago, and I'm a, a, a co-chair with the Democrat from, uh, from Pennsylvania, and uh, my office brought the NFL, the commissioner of the NFL, I know he's having some rough times these days, <laughs> but I think they got that resolved yesterday, thanks, thank goodness. But we brought him to Washington to meet with the uh, chief of staff, the assistant chief of staff, General Austin from the Army, to talk about TBI. A PTSD, and it was an outstanding hearing. Uh, the NFL committed thirty million dollars uh, to give to NIH for research uh, on TBI, which is so very important. So you know, our soldiers are heroes. Uh, they don't want to leave the battlefield, but we've got to encourage them to get the treatment right away. Just like the, the, the football players, they don't want to leave the field because of the team mentality. Uh, you know, the soldier's creed in the Army, uh, uh, and, and then the, the, the ethos factor. I think you, you guys know that. We've got a veteran here. Uh, but it's so important. But also, we have to talk to our young people. I've talked to football coaches, high school football coaches here in Pasco County. Uh, and they say, Gus, we've got to get this started. Public awareness of parents. That I don't know how serious these concussions are. And I, I took the liberty, because I'm not bashful when it comes to my constituents, I took the liberty of asking the NFL for a grant for Pasco County so we could purchase new houses, which is so very important. So we're, we're doing more in that area. It's, it's very, very exciting. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to bore you. I want to tell you about uh, something I did a few months ago, uh, which I wish would have gone through if we, we had a different administration you know, we have to speak out, ladies and gentlemen. This is very important. We have to speak out and not worry about offending people because we have to save our country. Okay? That's number one. But uh, I had placed restrictions, okay, and conditions on aid to Egypt six months ago. All right? We give Egypt $1.6 billion. Okay, and what they're doing is they're abusing their people over there. We have 13 million Coptic Christians who can't even worship. Uh, it was bad under Mubarak. It's worse under the Muslim Brotherhood. Okay, they're being persecuted. They're being crucified over there, and we're giving Egypt that money unrestricted. So I place conditions on that aid. 
uh, in the appropriations bill. I didn't think I'd get it through the first time, but I did. We got it through the Senate as well. Guess what happened? Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton waived those provisions and gave the money to Egypt. Okay, look what's happening in the Middle East. We've got to be careful. We can't side with people that, 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 that are not acting in our best interests. That's what's, what's happening in Syria right now. So we need true leadership in the White House. We need strong leadership in the White House. And in my opinion, we've got to pick up the United States Senate and keep the House and just watch us. We have a $16 trillion national debt. Why are we doing this to our children? We have to make tough decisions, difficult decisions. We may not get reelected, but you put your country first, and I have to put my country first, serving your country. Okay? Uh, so, and, and think of the, the future. Our children have to have the opportunities that we have. So, again, I look forward to representing you if we're, if we're lucky enough to win. I'm not taking anything for granted. I'm not taking anything for granted. 300,000 new constituents here in Pasco and an additional 40,000 in Pinellas. So we're trying to shake hands and meet people. I, I know I can't get 300,000 people one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, I'm sure trying to. And uh, it will be an honor to represent you here in Pasco County. I represent West Pasco County. Look forward to representing the entire county. Thank you very much, and God bless you. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Well, what a wonderful group. Now my favorite part of lunch is... Now he did say we need to speak out. This dude speaks out. Oh, one from the chair. Welcome to Rooters Club. How many people are at lunch for the first time at a Rooters Club event? Cool. I came prepared. There is one rule in Rooters Club. Very simple, have fun. Our mantra is pay it forward. You come here, you get to know each other, you become friends, and guess what? You do business together, you have fun together, you socialize together. This club started three years and three months ago. We've made some great strides. And for the new people, no one can accuse me of trying to get rich from this club because I don't join, um, charge you a dime to be a member. The other clubs, there's nothing wrong with them, but they greet you with a, a bunch of rules and an invoice. I greet you with a handshake, one rule, have fun, and come and enjoy. We had over uh, around 100 people at um, Quality Inn last night. But I do have bylaws. <laughs> My bylaws are very important to me. I'm a Vietnam War vet. I'm an old guy. And um, the bylaws I have, everyone who comes to a lunch for the first time, I give you a copy of the Constitution of the United States. And I'm going to present everybody here with one. Somebody want to hand these out for me? Oh, yeah, come on, yeah, good. The members raise their hand. The ones that raise their hand, they get a copy of the, uh, the Constitution. I'm a capitalist pig. I believe that the private sector is should be developing jobs in this country, not the freaking government. The government has no place. And every time I hear Obama the Messiah, the reason I say that, he looks like a deer with headlights in his eyes, but he thinks he's God Almighty. I apologize, I got um, allergies today, so my voice isn't quite true like it normally is. Just kidding. But anyway, the government, every time I hear the regime talking, they're talking about infrastructure jobs. Infrastructure jobs is code word for union jobs for big unions. You go out and build a bridge, bridge is built, jobs are gone. You go out and build a road, road is built, 
jobs are gone. We got to have the private sector with entrepreneurs out here going and building jobs in this country. A statistic, a statistic just came out this week, 55% of small business owners said under conditions in this country today they would not even start a business. And that's a sad situation. But I'm personally going to be proud to give Gus Filarakis, my new friend, a copy of the Constitution. Stand up still for a minute. Normally at this point, I say I would love to send a copy of this to Washington, D.C., to Baby the Messiah. But I found out I would have to send an interpreter, and it wasn't worth the frick. So I'm going to hand Gus Filarakis a second copy. If you see the dude, hand it to him and tell him he needs a refresher course.